back. It is the Vegas Take Sharp and Shapiro. Glad you could join us. By the way, we just heard that Andrew Yang will be in Las Vegas today. Uh, reason, One of the main reasons being he is going to be having a meeting with Daniel Negreanu, one of his biggest supporters. Negreanu, Real Kid Poker, will be joining us coming up in hour number three to talk a little bit about that. I'm curious how much money Negreanu donated to his campaign. I'm going to ask him that. doesn't mean he's going to answer it, but uh, we'll definitely ask him. Also, hour number two, Sam Peters. He's a Republican for Congress running in Nevada District 4. He's going to be joining us coming up in a little bit. Why is he the man to beat Stephen Horsford? We'll get to that coming up in hour number two. And really looking forward to this interview. As we know, the Houston Astros scandal is not going away anytime soon. A lot of managers have been fired for that. You know, pretty much uh, blackballed from baseball, at least a few. Well, now a pitcher by the name of Mike Bolzinger is suing the Houston Astros claiming that it hurt his career, asking for damages. His attorney is Ben Messalus, and he will be joining us. And my question is, boy, does this set a weird precedence? Does that mean every single pitcher that fist, uh, faced the Houston Astros in postseason can sue the organization? I'll tell you, if he, if we'll he, get to that. If he wins this lawsuit, the Astros might not be a team anymore after mm-hmm. paying out with that. Because Mike Bolsinger, do you know what happened with them, Brian? I don't, but I do want to talk about that in hour number three. Go ahead. Okay, so he gave up. Four runs, three home runs in in the late ninth inning of a game in which they were up, I believe, against the Houston Astros in 22 pitches. He just got completely shellacked and shelled. Well, I want you to bring that up in hour number three because that's that's an important point you make. And uh, it's like I said, it could set a very dangerous precedence for the Houston Astros. That whole organization could file for bankruptcy if every single pitcher can sue them. So we'll get to that. It'll be an interesting interview. We'll see uh, what he has to say about that. But I want to uh, talk a little bit about Tulsi Gabbard. Listen, I respect the fact that she served this country honorably. I think she's a smart woman, and she's certainly brave. And, and nothing could ever take that away from her. But that being said, I just think she's a really bad politician. And for all intents and purposes, I think she's more of a Republican than a Democrat. But uh, she's made some weird statements over the course of the last few days. She made an appearance on the Sean Hannity show, the TV show, that is. And, you know, Sean Hannity is the type of guy that even if he has a Democrat, you know, if he has a Democrat on his show, he's going to press them on some issues. So Sean Hannity is getting into a discussion with her about drugs and the war on drugs. And Gabbard's always been one of those people that wants to decriminalize certain aspect aspects of drugs. But then it got to a point where Sean Hannity is asking for her stance on heroin, and she doesn't give an answer. This is really weird. So have a listen to this. Substance abuse and addiction. Would you legalize heroin? Substance abuse and Would addiction. Would you legalize heroin? Don't issue. make me be a jerk. As a health care issue, rather than one where we are putting more and more people heroin. Would you legalize in our it? prisons. Would you legalize it? This is my point. We've got to end the failed war on drugs You're so that ducking. we can no, we can help dodging. people. We can help people who need help All right. rather than putting them in our prison. But thank you for coming. Thank you. It's good to yeah. see you, Carl. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for dodging the question. Tulsi, what is wrong with you? Are you a moron? Just answer the question and say no. You think anybody wants to legalize heroin? Maybe she does want to legalize heroin. That, that is ridiculous. By the way, this is the same woman who would not call Assad a war criminal. She, for whatever reason has extreme views, but won't answer questions. I believe the reason why she won't answer that question is because she thinks heroin should be legalized, which is ridiculous. Yeah, she It's de- absurd. She definitely has extreme views, and she likes to kind of express them vaguely. Well, that's absurd right there. And, and, and But she's afraid to commit. But listen, I don't disagree with everything she talks about, but I think she, she talked about prostitution. I don't think she handled it the right way. So she was asked about the legalization of the sex industry and and prostitution. Here's what she said. She said, if consenting adults want to engage in sex work, that is their right, and it should not be a crime. All people should have autonomy over their bodies and their labor. What do you think about that, J.D.? Yeah, I totally agree. I I, I think it would, you know, sex trafficking would be reduced significantly, especially with underage women. STDs would be reduced significantly. I think that it would actually help out some marriages that are that are failing sexually. I, I don't. I don't think that prostitution should be illegal okay, across but, the United States. But here's the problem with her answer: is that she didn't go into specifics. For example, many people on the right are attacking her, saying, "Oh, you just want people off the streets. You're just going to let women off the streets, go into a car, blah blah blah." She didn't talk about that, but she didn't also say she agrees with that. I'm going to assume, and I'm making an assumption here. 
that she is okay with the brothels, legalizing it because – and by the way, so am I. First of all, it's more clean. Right. Less chance of getting disease, very small chance of getting disease. Uh, there's security there. You don't really have to worry about your safety. The women really don't have to worry about their safety. The men don't have to worry about their safety. It's, it's a safe environment. It is regulated. It is monitored, which is a very, very good thing. You're paying taxes. It's a legal business. There's no pimps involved here. They all here. have licenses. If, yeah. if, if all the girls in the brothels were licensed, tax-paying members of society and it right. was legalized, it would save under lives. those circumstances, I would not have an issue with it. And it would save lives. But many people that are extreme on the right— the evangelical Christians, some of whom are the same people that keep their mouth shut when Donald Trump says just atrocious things about women. Many of the evangelicals, oh, no, we can't have that. We can't legalize prostitution. Really? Then what is your solution to all the problems that are on the streets with prostitution? For the women that are raped and killed, the murders, the robberies, what is your solution, evangelicals? Well, and, and prostitution and drugs, heroin in particular, they, they kind of go hand in hand. A lot of a lot of prostitutes are drug addicts mm-hmm. that are looking for a quick fix, and uh, they and they do they, they turn these tricks underground to get a hold of these drugs. So the two are kind of synonymous. I'll tell you, we've had a few women on this show in the past few months that are that are uh, working some of these brothels. They sound like they're doing pretty well to me. Extremely well. They sound like they're prospering. And they're, and they're doing and they're, well, and they're very well spoken. Yeah. So let me. They're articulate. So let me ask this question out there to those of you that want to call in. Are you for or against legalized prostitution? Do you agree with Tulsi Gabbard? Now, many people that, you know, preach the Bible and, uh, you know, are way on the right, evangelicals, are against it. I completely disagree with that, by the way. What do you think of it? Do you think that prostitution should be legal? Do you disagree? Do you think prostitution should be illegal? I want to hear from you, and I want to know your thoughts at 702-257-5396. Again, that number to call in if you want to be a part of the conversation is 257-5396. Also taking your thoughts on Gabbard not answering the question that was put forth by Sean Hannity probably six or seven times. Do you want to legalize heroin? Yes or no? And she wouldn't answer the question. This is someone that's running for the presidency of the United States, and she can't answer a simple question like that. Is there any normal human being out there, anybody, that thinks that heroin should be legalized? That's absurd. And the fact that she couldn't even answer that question to me is ridiculous. We're taking your thoughts on that, and we're taking your thoughts on her comments about prostitution. Now, she didn't go into detail, but she did say that prostitution should be legal. She didn't say how. She didn't talk about the brothels. She said all people should have autonomy over their bodies and their labor. And I'm, I've been pretty consistent on this opinion since I moved to Vegas 20 years ago, and that is, yes, I think prostitution should be legal so long as it's regulated. I'm not saying that in every street corner there should be a brothel. However, what I am saying is just like the marijuana dispensaries, there should be certain zones where brothels are legal. Can't be next to a church or a synagogue. You know, there are certain rules that need to be put in place. Now, she didn't talk about that, and I have a problem with that. If you're going to talk about legalizing prostitution, you probably have to go into a little bit more depth well, than what she, she went know, into. She, she kind of related it to abortion by saying that women should have autonomy over their own body, and that's that's not how you handle that, t- that particular conversation. Now, here's yeah. an interesting spin. What if, say, prostitution gets legalized across the country, and there's a caveat involved that if you are married, you have to have your spouse's consent to engage in prostitution. How no, that do, can how, never how you, happen. How do you think that would go over? That can never happen. That's ridiculous. You're basically making someone sign something like you're an eight-year-old. Listen, if you're going to cheat on your wife or husband, you're an adult. You can do what you want. I don't agree with it, but that that's insane. And then, you know, uh, you know what are you, you're going to have people forge documents. That's never going to work. The whole re- – uh, sadly, but it's true – Many of the men that go into these brothels probably are married, or their girlfriend or their wife probably doesn't know about it. So the brothels certainly wouldn't be for that. We're taking your phone calls. Again, that number to call, 702-257-5396. Again, that number to call if you want to be a part of the conversation, 702-257-5396. Your thoughts on prostitution. What do you think? Do you think that it should be legalized? Do you agree with Tulsi Gabbard? Or are you on the other side of this, as many evangelical Christians would be on the right, saying that prostitution should not be legal? And then my question to you is this. What is your solution to the problems with prostitution on the streets? I'm not saying if, if, if it's legalized, 
all these prostitutes will be off the streets. No, it's not going to solve everything. And I would never say that. But certainly it'll help some of these women get off the streets and maybe get normal jobs where they're actually paid a paycheck and pay taxes. 702-257-5396, again, is the number to call. Let's start off with Michelle. Michelle, you're first up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Michelle? Good morning. Uh, prostitutes, prostitution, to be employed in that area, is it's full of deception, and it's a temporary power and, uh, you know, it, the, the pursuit is money, which is greed, and with that money comes power. But it's temporary. Prostitution, if we were to make it legalized, it would, in essence, be giving a nod of approval to something that is full of sin. And, and once again, I repeat, deception. So prostitutes are used like, like a toilet bowl. And any woman who goes into that is, is, is deceived by the whole thing. If, if it's such a good thing... Why don't all of us say, "Hey, it's okay for our sisters to go into the brothel"? It's okay. Well, for here's our why. Let me. Okay, so let me. So let me respond to that. It's a personal choice. Your opinion is different than those, obviously, that work in the brothel. They might enjoy sex more than you. They might. They, they have different views than you. I, I'm, I'm just saying. It's just well, a different. It, 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 and when you say temporary, I think you have, you have a good point there. I would say that it's based on you know what what the person looks like or what what their level of you know attractiveness is and i'm sure that would that would fade over the course of x amount of years or x amount of time but brian's totally right of course they are but you mentioned they, sisters and daughters if they're over 18 years old or if they're, if they're of age whatever age is that is 100 percent their own decision is, isn't yes, that true is. but when they're selling their bodies they are also selling their souls which affects their personality. What is their soul? What do you, I don't understand what you mean by What okay, do you mean uh, selling their soul? Okay, like in their shoe? And, you know, we, we have a soul and, and we have a spirit, but the soul what is, entails the personality and your intellect. What do, what do you mean the soul and the spirit? I thought your personality is defined by maybe your brain. What is a soul and a spirit? I don't understand. Okay, what I believe is that the spirit is what is... Okay. Uh, Michelle, separates from the body at death. Okay, but That's you just – Michelle, I respect your opinion, but here's where I think you're failing to understand. You just said it is my belief, and I would never take that belief away from you. But what you, what is your belief is not others. There are many others That's that – okay. Oh, okay, That's, so, but you're not saying it's okay because you're saying you don't think prostitution should be legal, and you're taking that right away from others that disagree with you. That's, that's where I have a problem. I, I respect your opinion, Michelle. That's fine. And you know what? I'll be honest with you. If I had a daughter – or, you know, I have a sister. I don't want her working in the brothel. I'll be completely honest with you. But I, but if she wanted to do it, I wouldn't like it. But I would say, you know what? You're a grown-up. You can do what you want to do. And I wouldn't talk to her about her soul. Uh, I mean, I disagree with you on that whole soul thing, but that's your opinion, and that's fine. But do you understand where I'm going, Michelle, with this is that, you know, there are women— I understand that. Yeah. I, I would still recommend and advise that these women take a long shower, get in your car, pack your bags, get away from the brothel. Drive away and never look back. Okay, so what's drive your solution? Into, drive into your right. uh, a new life. I understand that's your decision, that's your opinion, and that's fine. But what what is your solution to all the prostitutes that are illegally selling their bodies? What's the solution to that? Uh, to become informed, uh, to get educated, to communicate with these women. Don't don't give up on uh, every everybody has friends and uh, family members that are in the brothel. Don't give up on these women. Well, I don't think it's the fact that I don't think it's the fact that people are giving up on the women. I think it's the fact that the women are putting themselves in those situations. A lot of them have drug addiction. A lot of them, uh, you know, right. are, are are relying on this for money so that they can support those addictions. And all I'm trying to say, Michelle, and by the way, I appreciate your perspective, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that agree with you. But all I'm trying to say, Michelle, is this, and this only: it will take some of those women off the streets. These women will be safer. They will be in situations where it will be regulated. They will make money, and they will make a living. And nobody is forcing them to do it. It is their choice, and that is very, very important. A lot of these women that are on the streets are being forced into these things because of pimps. These women that we've talked to that work in these brothels, nobody's forcing them to do anything. They love what they do. So while I understand that there are going to be some religious people like yourself that are going to be talking about you're selling your soul and that sort of thing, I don't think like that. I don't think there is anything as a soul. I think you have a brain, you have an IQ, everybody's personality is different, and you know, if you want to work in a brothel, and you want to sell your body, and you want to flaunt what you have, and you enjoy what you, it is that you do, I don't see anything wrong with that. With that being said, I wouldn't want a daughter of mine to do it, I wouldn't want uh, 
you know, a sister of mine to do it or my mom or whatever the case may be. You get what I'm trying to say. Boy, that was a disgusting thought. 702-257-5396 is the number to call again. 257-5396. Let's go to Malik. Malik, you're next up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Malik? Yo, what's up, fellas? What's up, Malik? Hey, man. Yeah, the way I feel, man, like I lived in Europe for about five years. And Heron, you know, I mean, as far as in Amsterdam, everything is uh, legal. But, um, you know, in Germany, you know, every, Germany, had, they had a different kind of rule. But what I'm saying is I think if you legalize all drugs only and make, it, make the feds control it, then you won't have fentanyl and all those other garbage right. making people pass out. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it sounds, it, it does sound a little bit out there and probably will never be well, it, uh, accepted by all society. But if you think about it, the drug addicts is out there, they're getting garbage anyway. So that's how they die in overdoses. So mm-hmm. but, no, the, just like they, just like they're doing with cannabis, they should legalize everything. And people that want to use it are going to use it. But right. you don't, and people that don't want to use it are not going to use it, you know? Well, yeah, if, if, it's, if it's legalized and it's controlled by the feds, then you're going to have to shut down all the borders very, very strictly because a lot of these illegal drugs that are coming through, which I guess were perceived to be legal at that point, are coming through the border and they're not coming through the feds. So how would you handle that? Yeah, so, so that's the, that's the that's the big challenge because I mean you always gonna, but but think about this though, uh, uh, JD, if you're a user, you're probably going to want to go someplace like a. The, a pharmacy getting your drugs versus getting it from somebody off the street, I would right. think. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Malik. Listen, this is a difficult situation, but it's yeah. cer- but it's certainly not something we're going to uh, – yeah, it's yeah. not going to happen overnight, Malik. I appreciate your thoughts and uh, your thoughts on that and your opinion on that. Yeah, good call, Malik. Again, that number to call is 702-257-5396. Again, that number is 257-5396. Let's go to Brady. Brady, you're next up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Brady? gentlemen I, I think we should legalize both heroin and hookers and then we can put a tax on it and then the money derived from it brian you can uh you can use that for funding for your drag queens that are reading at the public library okay would you like to have a serious conversation brady because don't quit your j job you're not funny and that wasn't funny you never are uh, uh so do you want to give me your actual opinion on this or do you just want to make more jokes isn't it pretty much legal here in Vegas anyway? No, it's not. And I'm not I'm not surprised that you're ignorant to the facts because every single time you call into the show, you're ignorant to facts. It's not have you, have you gone down to the strip lately, Brian? Would you, would you like me to educate you? I will educate you. It is how not, long how long have you lived in, in Vegas? How about Brian? how about listen to my answer first? Are how about, you still living in your How about how about how about Brian? listen how about listen to my answer first? Okay. Are it, you still living at your okay. parents' house, Brian? Pot him down, pot him down. Uh, I'll answer your, the, the question, Brady, because clearly you don't know what you're talking about. Prostitution is not legal in Vegas. It is legal in other zones like Pahrump, Carson City. Here's what is legal in Vegas. When you see these billboards on this on the strip and on Las Vegas Boulevard, which is I think what you were referencing it to, you are spending money for your time to deal with some of these women and any extracurricular activities, which by the way would be considered illegal, is between the man and the woman. But these businesses legally exist in Vegas because it's spending time with a woman just talking to her. She comes up to your room. Now, we all know what probably is going on in these rooms, but she, you know, legally she's allowed to dance for you. Just like when you hire a couple women at a at a stag party or something, they're allowed to dance for you. That's what these businesses are. Now, Brady, do you understand that? Do you understand the law? And would you like to ask another question? Like if you go down to Valley View and pick up a hooker and give her like 20 bucks, isn't that the law that's been going on for 100 years in Vegas? Is that is that what you do? I mean, I, I don't know, Brady. I, I I've know, never done that before. But you're saying it doesn't happen. I mean, prostitution- where did I say? Where did I say it doesn't happen? Will you please li- see? That's the problem, Brady. You don't listen. I didn't say prostitution doesn't happen. I just gave you an example of how it probably does happen. But I just explained to you what the laws were here. Did you not understand what, what I just uh, said? The law looks a different way, Brian. At prostitution. What are you talking about? Prostitution. What are you talking about? Prostitution is not legal in Las Vegas. Do you so not what? understand you don't that? Anybody for it? That's that's not true. I guarantee you if you looked into oh, the records. Oh, come on. Okay, would you like to make another wager that a prostitute I mean, has... have you ever been down to the strip, Brian, or are you just I just, Steiner's pub all I day? just explained to you what the law is. Are you that dumb you don't understand it? I can't even have a conversation with you, Brady. I try to have a serious conversation with you. You have an IQ of about 20. I just can't do it with you anymore. 702-257. Hey, really good call. 
702-257-5396 is the number to call. Let's go to Kevin. Kevin, you're next up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Uh-oh, we lost Kevin. 257-5396 is the number to call. Let's go to Mark. Mark, you're next up on the Vegas Take. What's up? Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, Good. Mark. Uh, I'm all for legalizing prostitution, but there's some some issues that go along with it, like possibly pregnancy or women going into it because it's easy trade and not getting education. Well, I'll start off by saying this. Even though condoms are not 100%, I know that when you go into any of these brothels, they are required to have the man wear a condom. That's 100%. I know that for a well, fact. Well, I know that. I'm just yeah. saying there are yeah. accidents. Well, absolutely. I, and listen, Mark, I agree with you uh, on that. That is an issue. No, and, but- and, and that's a good point. If if there was an accident, would each would would each you know, sex worker have, have no? Or, would, would, they have, would they have an insurance policy or something along those lines, or how would that be covered? Or no, where would the liability land or lie? That's kind of what I was saying. Is, I mean, if the woman, it's her body. If she chooses to have this child, yeah, is and now required, to right? No, 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 there's there's definitely a lot of logistics that you have to consider as well. Yeah, Mark, and that's what makes it such make, an interesting conversation. Make no mistake about it, Mark. But I will say this: in Pahrump, those brothels there and uh, the brothels at other places, they seem to be doing quite well. So something's got to be working, right? I, I think I think it's a good idea. Yeah. I'm just saying. I hear you. A lot of logistical issues. No, there's Mark. There's no question. We can't just legalize legalize it and say, all right, have fun. There's there's got to be laws put in place, and in prompt they have those kind of laws. But that's a valid point, Mark. Let's take one more phone call hey, before call, we go Mark. to break. Let's take one more phone call. Let's go to Dell. Dell, you're next up in the Vegas take. What's going on? Hey, Dell. Yeah, how you doing? Good, doing well. Hey, um, I've been listening to you guys out here at work and. You know, I think legalizing prostitution in Clark County is, like, way, way overdue. Yeah. I, I agree with you guys, mm-hmm. you know, but it's so hard yeah. to get it legislated through. I mean— Del, can I, I ask even, you something? Uh, you know, it was really hard to get marijuana legislated through, but they did it. And it was really hard to get sports betting legislated through outside yeah. of Nevada, and they did that, too. So I guess the point we're trying to say, Dell, is it is possible. It can happen. Way, way overdue. Why can't it happen? Well, I, I said it can, not can't. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think yeah. so. I mean, it's just. Well, I mean, it's number one. It's a it's a huge health issue, okay. And number two, I agree with your your uh, your co-host there. You know, I mean, so, so much illegal activity, right? You know, is accompanied with it. I right. mean, just make a lot of uh, communities and places now is safer. Yep. I said, but you got to treat these. Not just in not just so in a brothel setting, but if a, if, a, if a person or a woman wants to be, you know, an independent contractor, I mean, that's how that needs to be looked at. Exactly. Because, yes, well, and, I and, agree. And, and I didn't ask. Yeah, we didn't ask Roxanne. I mean, or, they're regulated. They have to be licensed. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? What is regulation? And by the way, Dell, thank you for the call. We, yeah, appreciate, great call, we appreciate your perspective. What is regulation? Well, it 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 it, uh, it makes things fair for the consumer. It makes things safe for the consumer. It's a win-win for everybody. And again, I'm not saying that brothels need to be next to churches. I'm not saying we need to find 30 brothels in Summerlin. But there's going to be some zoning issues there. This is going to happen eventually. There's no question this is going to happen eventually. It's just a matter of when. So I agree with Tulsi Gabbard. The problem I have with Gabbard going back to that is this. When you make a statement like that that you want prostitution back to be legal, up. you better know what you're talking about. Talk about the brothels. Give me a model, not it's, figuratively it's almost, speaking. It's almost like she's making these kind of overt, over-the-top statements just to get her name out there. Listen, I, I don't know why she's making the statements, but I'm just telling you right now she's not a good politician. All right, so coming up next, this guy's running as a Republican for Congress in Nevada District 4. His name is Sam Peters. He's running with against seven, other, seven candidates, I believe. Uh, this will be the Republican primary in June. He's going to be joining us in studio next. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll take a break. Be back right after this. It's the Vegas Take, 101.5 FM, 720 AM, K2.